Okay, so 6.1, done that, no problems. 6.2 looks very similar, in fact, it looks easier. The symmetric eye beam. So, what I don't have though is I don't have the second mode of area, so I need that. And it's saying this about uh, knowing that the spacing between the nails is 25 millimeters. What is the vertical shear in the B and uh, the vertical shear, sorry, in the beam is 500 newtons. So I've been told the V. So V is 500. Determine the shear force in each nail. So what are we doing there? So remember that Q equals V big Q over I and that's the force per unit length. And if I look at my beam sideways on, I've got these nails. Every 25 millimeters. Okay, so this is um, this is going off in the x direction. So, um, and so note here we've got force per unit length. So what we're being asked to find is the shear force per now. So we want to change this into a force. How do I do that? Oh well, in this case it's going to be that I'm applying a now every 25 millimeters. So if I call this something like L, um, <coughs> the force that I'm looking for, force per now, is going to be QL, which is V Q L over I. Well, the L is 25 millimeters. So I know the V, the Q won't be difficult to work out. Well, the difficult thing is the I. I'll sketch out my, my beam. Total is 140. <coughs> nice and symmetric, so the new tracks is going to be 70. Here we've got 20, 120, and then half this height, so that would be 130. Here, to get to the center, here it's just going to be half this height, so that's 10. So uh, things are symmetric, so I can really just... Uh, be a bit naughty and maybe just look at the top section and the middle section, double my top section to find my eye. So my eye is going to be, it's working millimeters, uh, we've got a breadth of 100, depth of 20, over 12, and we're going to times this, actually times all of this by 2, and what about the area for the top, so that's 100 times 20 and what about my H? So my H is going to be 130 take away 70 and that leaves me with 30 plus 30 60 so we've got 60 squared there and then I'm going to have two of them so top and bottom is, is symmetric if you want you can repeat the, the exercise again for the bottom. The, m the middle section uh, goes through the neutral axis so we have no H value. So we've just got the 20, uh, yeah the breadth is 20 and the height is 100 this time. 20 and the 100 are switched round to the power of 3 over 12 <coughs> so 
So that equals what in millimeters to the power of 4? 100 times 20 to the power of 3 divided by, oops, divided by 12 plus 100 times 20 times 60 squared. Let's do an equals here. Multiply that by 2 plus 20 times 100 to the power of 3 divided by 12 so that is 16.2 so we've got times 10 to the 6 let's change this into SI units so that becomes times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power of 4 ok so that's my I the Fortunately, everything's nice and symmetric, so we've got this now going all the way through. And um, what we're interested in is finding the Q, therefore, at this point here. We don't not interested in terms of the the width or anything like this in this case, because it's the nail that's holding things together. It's not the width. Previously, the previous question was we imagined that these things were being glued together, so therefore, I was interested in the width of the of surface contact area. This time, we've just got a nail holding this section, this section, this section together every 25 millimeters. So I'm taking my force per unit length, multiplying it by the length to find the shear force acting on the nail, and that is going to be Q L times by. <coughs> Uh, v which is 500 Q well that's the second moment of area for the top section yeah so we're we've got the now it's going all the way through so we're interested in what is happening in terms of the shear stress at this location here okay where the nail has gone through that uh, that section. So, what's the Q going to be? This time we need to find the um, distance from the neutral axis to its centroid. So what's that value there? <coughs> so the neutral axis is 70. Uh, its centroid is going to be 130 so it's actually it's the same as H isn't it so we've got the area of the top section 100 times 20 times 60 yeah, so the centroid is 130 take away 70 right this is in millimeters to the power of 3 so I'll put a times 10 to the minus 9 there okay so it's a w one set of millimeters one set of millimeters another set of millimeters so times 10 to the 9 so that is my Q now my L is 25 millimeters so 25 times 10 to the minus 3 and when I put in my calculator I'm going to I'm going to combine this all together and make it times 10 to the minus 12. Right, so that's the V done, the Q done, the L done, the I we worked out here. So 500 times 100 times 20 times 60 times 25. And then I want to times that by 1 to the minus 12. Divide it by 16.2 times 10 to the minus 6. So that gives me 92.6 Newtons. So notice the units here. This is force per unit length. I've multiplied it by the length where I'm applying the force every every time 
and what we end up with now with just a false. Okay, that's fine, that's correct. So that's question uh, 6.2. Uh, last one actually I labeled up as 5.2 whoops this is week 6 yeah so 6.2 so the last one sorry was uh, 6.1 not 5.1 okay